Welcome to the channel. Here is another camera with a very beautiful box. Uh, it's got a handle strap here. It's got some staining on top. Uh, I actually bought this maybe two years ago. Haven't had much chance to much chance to look at it. Uh, beautiful lock, as typical of the era. All kind of shapes. It's been. It's not chrome, but it's uh, nickel plated. Yeah. Uh, strap everything seems to be there uh, bottom the boxes of this let's say cases of this time have typically this kind of knobs here also nickel plated uh, well, let's see if you can see here now maybe you can see there's a pattern here embossed into the leather real leather reinforced with cardboard and a few other stuff proper stitching you know, you see often in almost all camera bags or any bags that was meant for some expensive equipment, let's say 100 years ago, they were always with beautiful stitching and beautiful leather work. Something which nowadays only is common if you buy, what, a 10,000 euro handbag. Back then it was in everything. Uh, and as you can see, they have survived perfectly to this day. Let's open this one up. Well, this one, uh, I have no key for it. Okay, let's open this one up. Uh -huh. uh, I don't know if it's visible. It's kind of like a violet, a purple, plush interior. Leather reinforced, very thick leather, reinforced with some paper-like material, but mostly for leather. Also inside, inside the lock here, it's been coated and nickel plated. Uh, it's all in the details. And this was, well, this was a bit more expensive camera but not like the ones I've shown you before. Uh, There's some more expensive camera, but more of the standard level, not necessarily even professional, but for normal user. Uh, so here's the interior, beautiful everywhere aligned with beautiful plush velvet. It feels incredible good. Uh, let me, the yeah, app smells a bit old, but not too bad. And put this to the side. So here's the camera. Right behind. Uh, the emblem on the front is a bit, I mean, no matter what light I will put, it's a, actually a bit, I think it has suffered a bit. I think it should say Ica there, basically the manufacturer, which later became to known as Zeiss and so on and so on. So it's one of the early German camera manufacturers. Uh, however, here in the back, uh, let's see, it says Zeiss icon. So it was made during the I believe maybe in the 1920s. However, at the same, after the point when Ica and many others were merged to become the Chai's icon, a part of the Chai's group of companies, which actually still exists today, and they do still make cameras, just not these. Uh, you find on top, um, actually rather interesting. Yeah, you can draw it like this. So you have viewfinder. Uh, all very beautifully made, intricate detail. It's funny, like everything is beautifully uh, chrome or nickel plated, well, nickel plated back then. There's some crazy attention to detail in the cameras made of the time, especially the ones, at least I know, for by the size icon and the companies belong to it. Um, metal, metal everywhere. Uh, I believe not real leather, could be fake leather, or leather, it's a combination of thin leather and paper and so on. Um, here's uh, two screw holes for tripods, you can put it further or here, depending on the kind of balance or the weight. Uh, here's the actual model of it. Uh, let's see if I can get it to show you. It says ideal. 225. So they numbered most of their camera models at size icon they had a name and then a numbering. The numbering usually signifies the size of the film and a few other details about the camera. So this belongs to the ideal range. Not sure if this was the most expensive or somewhere in the mid-range cameras. Uh, here's an attachment which enables you to remove the rear panel. Uh, there you can see the lens, the bellows. So basically you slide the film here and you take your shot or you could put a roll film holder here where the roll film would go like this. Um, this is missing the glass from the rear as typically it's it's been broken over during time. 
but it can actually relatively easily be replaced with a modern glass, no problem with that. Everything is painted to perfection, screws are lined. Um, you can see everything is numbered. Here's G40, maybe one of the own codes. All attachments like this one are beautifully plated, shiny, uh, perfect in condition. Okay, I think this one opens this hood where you can, if you have a glass there, you could basically view the eye and it even falls down with supports like this. And you could see the camera glass, the glass would be here and you could see basically the view that the camera sees. So kind of, a, this is kind of a portable view, what would, one would consider a large format slash portable view camera. Uh, or you can also just take snapshots with this one as well, attach flash to it and so on. Yeah. Let's put this one back in place. And there's some serial numbers. I'm sorry. There's some serial numbers shown there. Yeah, they, there was kind of numerous ways to attach uh, camera bags, holders, so on. And there was not so much, there was kind of like standard, but it took quite a long time before it became completely standardized, this, how attached looks and everything. So. Some was compatible, some was not, some used same as some other manufacturers, how to attach the films. But in general, the selection of available things was quite good. You didn't really need to worry about... Um, okay, I think... Uh, okay, <laughs> this one has a smart latch system. Not used to this one, maybe a more expensive feature in this camera. Yeah, I'm interested. So let's open up this one. Um, there's supposed to be a button somewhere. Yeah, usually a hidden one in this uh, sizes folding, more expensive cameras. Uh, click, goes out, and then you take hold of here. There's two buttons, you squeeze them together and you pull the lens front, stand it out like this, and it stops. Uh, then you can fold this open as a, sorry, as a viewfinder match this one so the look through here and this shows the view of the frame you can use this uh, shoot snapshot shoot quick take quick pictures with it or this is quite an advanced no I'm not really an advanced camera but these have been made a lot really many many decades already before this camera was made so this was a very popular kind of for normal users hobbyists camera also professionals did use them. Some of them may be more expensive models compared to this. Uh, here's, I'm not sure if it is ivory, whatever this is, uh, or bone, whatever, and they have engraved here the distance markings, serial number everywhere, uh, beautifully, beautifully plated things here. Uh, everything is beautiful black, uh, really deep black color. There's the label of choice icon there. This one is with the Dominar lens. Um, I don't remember the exact details of it, but it belongs to one of the better range of lenses. 13.5 um, centimeters, the focal length, the aperture, maximum aperture is 4.5. So by today's standards, it's quite good lens. And I've used some of these Dominars. They're actually, even by today's standards, they're really, really good lenses. So. They haven't really gone bad in time. Here's the bellows. Here's a clip which you can basically unlock and you can stretch this even further out. This lens standard makes like make macro photography. So all in one package. There was some of these car brands, I think the more expensive size icon ones, they had a lens one which you could remove the lens and change the lenses. Not sure if this one has it too. Some, um, let's say from other manufacturers too, I think the discerning element between the most expensive ones was that, of course, that the leather could have been, let's say, a colorful one. It could have green, different color ones. Uh, those have not survived very well today. You can have some parts was golden with brass color, maybe some cold accent, some visual thing. And then from the technical side, one of the differences was that you could have a lens that you could replace easily, change. And like I said this earlier, the selection of these lenses was quite big. So, uh, yeah, and you could mix between manufacturers very easily. 
This one is for the remote uh, trigger like a cable. You can, it's actually the attachment is still the same as today, so you can buy a modern one and, that, and, and attach it there. Here you can tension the shutter. Here's some different settings. If it's just open, fixed with timing. Here you can set the timing from 200th of a second to one second. Uh, then there's the aperture setting is here where you can set the aperture. Um, never was the most comfortable way to adjust aperture. Here you have the dial. Some manufacturers made it better than others. Um, some added external leathers to make it more easier. Maybe this is one of the difference between the really professional cameras that they uh, paid a lot more, even more attention to the usability and easily reachable controls of the camera. Where this is more about the beauty of all the screws and the small details, everything engraved in a beautiful way, painted inside. I mean, the detail of this, these are like small pieces of jewel. Uh, there's a, uh, this at least used to be a bubble level. I think this one is done. It's leaked out probably or vaporized out. I have had few cameras which have still original bubble level and they still work perfectly. And yeah, you could just replace it. Usually the color was red in the liquid, at least one subset. Here's a, a lens also, which can be used for viewing. So I don't know, you can probably can't see it I, because I would need to clean this uh, mirror behind there. I would need to clean it so that it would have a proper view. It's a bit dirty. Uh, so you can view also through this one, for, if you, let's say, look from upwards and you're taking a portrait of someone, you can look upwards from here, hold this against your chest. So you can use that for that way. Okay, I think this knob is not original. Someone replaced it a long time ago. <laughs> it's very old. You can see it from the making of it. Uh, interesting that someone lost this by accident. This has been used, but has survived very well. And, and another interesting is here you see these dots and here you see dots. So with these adjustments here and here, uh, you can move this lens upwards, downwards in relation to the film plane in the back, which changes the basically you can correct the perspective in different ways and manipulate the images in all kind of interesting ways. I don't, in, I don't remember the size of this camera. Uh, I think it was not, this was not one of the standard sizes in Europe. I think this was meant for American markets. Um, I could be wrong. I will try to put a link to more information about this exact model online. That's it. Thank you for watching and see you next video.